Hello friends, welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology and in this series of videos we are going to talk about photosynthesis which is one of the very important mechanisms that is there in the nature with which uh, food is produced. Food in a sense of simple sugars are produced by plants and all the other organisms who have chlorophyll in their body. So what is photosynthesis in the first place? I assume most of you know in a basic terms of what is photosynthesis. But the idea of photosynthesis is making simple sugar from the atmospheric carbon dioxide and water. So if you look at the simple reactions of a photosynthesis, what you will find? You will find to go up with carbon dioxide and water and that will make the sugar. Okay, and plus oxygen. So if to balance this equation, we can write six molecules of carbon dioxide, six molecules of water invested to make one molecule of glucose and one and six molecules of oxygen. And the best thing about this reaction is we need this sugar as well as oxygen. We all breathing organisms need both this to survive. And this conversion of carbon dioxide and water into sugar and oxygen is provided by plants. So plants in turn helping us in all the way possible so that we get our food, we get our oxygen. Now the question is how this whole process works. That's what more important, that's what we will study in this first video. Because in this video I'm going to give you an overview of the photosynthesis. If you break this term down, photo and synthesis, you will get photo means light and synthesis means the production of something. In this case, a production of sugar. Now photo, why? Because you need light to convert carbon dioxide and water into glucose and oxygen. So in the middle, you need energy to do that. And the energy source is the light from the sun. So sun is playing the important role of providing the energy supply of converting carbon dioxide into glucose. While you need water as an electron donor for the process. Because electron donor is also important to convert the carbon dioxide into the glucose. Why? We will see that in a moment. Now for the simplicity, we can divide the photosynthesis in two different parts and actually in reality the photosynthesis occurs in two separate stages. The first stage of photosynthesis is a step where glucose is not produced. They only make the, the cell ready for the synthesis of the glucose. Now the first step is known as light reaction of photosynthesis because in that step they require the light source and the energy from the sun, right? So what we see, if we divide it here into two different parts, we can say this is the light reaction and the other one is known as dark reaction or Kelvin cycle. Now, people earlier called it as dark, light and dark, but now we know that this process of reactions also take place in presence of light so you don't call it dark reactions uh, or calling dark reaction in that sense is not that accurate. But for the opposite idea, light reaction and dark reaction, that's what we uh, tell. In the light reaction, what happens? The first step of the, the reactions, it's simply involving the water and water splits to generate oxygen and hydrogen. That's what happens in the first step. Now for the splitting of the water, they also need energy supply from outside. So the energy supply coming from the sun as a photon. Okay, That photon energy excites specific centers that are found in the plant cell known as chloroplasts. And even inside the chloroplast there are specific structures known as grana. In the grana membrane we have we have small stack of uh, the, the small granum sections. In those membrane we have the reaction center where the process of this activation take place. Now this is what happens in the first step. Energy from sun helps to split the water. Along with that what it does at the end it helps to produce electron carrying molecules that is NADPH and also they produce some 
energy in form of ATP. So these are the things that they produce at the start point of the light reaction, at the start point of the photosynthesis. So till the end of the light reaction, you know that we don't have any glucose produced. But what we have, we have oxygen already removed, released in the air. We have NADH, NADPH, those are the chemical compounds that are produced. And we also have ATP that is produced. Because you know, light reaction is only required to capture the energy of sun and convert it into an energy format that a cell can utilize, that is ATP. Because all the other cellular processes cannot utilize photon as an energy source. You need to provide some energy currency which is accepted inside a cell and that is ATP. So that's why the light reaction is important to make some ATP that will help to convert carbon dioxide into the glucose in the next reaction that is in the dark reaction. And also we need to produce an electron donors here which will be NADPH. So the first primary electron donor is this water but ultimately that is transferred through NADH and then they will participate in the process of the dark reaction or Kelvin cycle. So once that thing is done then comes down the second part of the reaction. The dark reaction or Kelvin cycle it initiates with carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide as we know it's a raw material. Carbon dioxide involved in interaction with other five carbon molecules that are present inside the plant cell there and then they convert it into ultimately glucose. But for this conversion they need to have the presence of ATP and the electrons and the electrons are donated by remember NADH. So that is the idea of converting the carbon dioxide into glucose required electron required ATP. And once the glucose is produced, then glucose needs to be transported across the whole cell of the whole body of the plant and then they store it in different forms like starch. So this is a general overview of two reactions that we know. In the first reaction, it's a light harvesting reaction where we use the energy from the light, converting it into ATP and also producing electron carrying compounds like NADH. And also we release oxygen. In the second step, Plants utilize carbon dioxide and the electrons that are donated by NADH there and presence of ATP help converting carbon dioxide into glucose. So that is in a sense two separate stages of the reaction. In the first stage producing oxygen and the second stage producing glucose or the sugar. So now once you know the overview of the reactions of how this thing works, another important thing is where does it work? I haven't talked about it in the first place because I think that most of you have an idea about where the process of photosynthesis take place. Photosynthesis can take place in all the organisms who have access to a specific pigment known as chlorophyll. Without that pigment and there are some other few accessory pigments associated like chlorophyll, without those pigments known as antenna pigments, no other organisms can utilize the energy from sun to convert it into the ATP. And without these light reactions, no cell or no organism in the world can convert the carbon dioxide into the sugar. That's not possible. If you look at this reaction, it seems quite easy. You take carbon dioxide and water, you'll get the food. But you can't cook it in the kitchen, right? The reason behind that, because you cannot harvest that energy. You need a lot of energy and the energy source is the sun. So the only way to do it you should have an energy harvesting complex which will carry the light reaction. So to carry this light reaction, you need to have any of the antenna pigments. Antenna pigments receives a specific wavelength of light and get excited and reach a specific higher energy state. And once they produce that electron and remove that electron to the higher energy state, then that will start transferred from that higher energy state to completely lower energy state and finally returns to the acceptor that will be the NADH and then NADH will carry that to the dark reactions. That is the idea of the light reaction. So in light reaction we will see a series of electron transport chain just like we saw in the electron transport system in case of aerobic respiration. 
So here this electron transport chain works in a reverse way. Remember in the, in the process of electron transport chain in aerobic respiration, the process begins from NADPH or NADH, FADH2, it starts from there and they start transferring the electrons, donating the electrons, it's transferred and ultimately the terminal electron acceptor was oxygen binding with the electron and with hydrogen converting it into water. So oxygen was the electron acceptor but in this case water acts as an electron donor and initiates the process of electron transport chain. Once it initiates the process of electron transport chain that ultimately it received by the oxygen. Uh, it, it, it's, it's received by the NAD into converted to NADH and then finally they will carry it to the dark reaction and during this process whenever water removes the electron it splits into oxygen and hydrogen that's the idea so again for this process to develop ATP you need to make a concentration gradient of proton across the membrane of chloroplast inner membrane of chloroplast okay and actually not only the inner membrane of chloroplast here we will see the inner membrane of granum that's what the structure it is so if you look at the the specific regions where the process of photosynthesis take place in uh, in plants it takes place in the chloroplast because in the chloroplast only you look at the structure of chloroplast something like this in the chloroplast only it's a bilayered um, uh, bimembrane layered organelle and inside that we have the stacks of stack like structure like this known as the thylakoid okay now all these regions of thylakoid linked together is known as the granum and the matrix part is known as the stroma. Now in this thylakoid, if we zoom into one of this thylakoid structure, we will find out the specific, if we look at the membrane of the thylakoid, this membrane of the thylakoid is a position where all these reaction centers are present. That means those antenna pigments are present known as chlorophyll. Okay, so chlorophyll presence there in the reaction center in the membrane of thylakoid whenever light hits here excites removal of the electron in the higher energy state then slowly converted through the electron carriers like plastocyanin plastoquinone all these different things which we will see in a moment and then finally get transferred and ultimately it reaches there to the NADH and then they will carry that to the dark reactions so that in a sense is a process of photosynthesis as an overview so remember this always photosynthesis works in two separate segments first segment to harvest the energy from Sun producing ATP and NADPH while the second step or the dark reaction is utilization of carbon dioxide as a raw material converting it into glucose with the help of the electron donated by NADPH so for this process plant cell needs to open the like there are specific regions in the plant cell especially in the leaves where the photosynthesis take place in maximum amount because leaf carry a lot of surface area so it can reach a lot of sunlight it can get a lot of sunlight that's why we have a specific flattened structure of the leaf so once the leaf receives the sunlight uh, as photons are hitting and uh, the reaction center so the electron is jumped so in this process of the reactions, leaf have specific structures known as stoma, stomata. The stomata should open to get access to the oxygen or carbon dioxide. So whenever stomata opens, plant can get oxygen or carbon dioxide. Now it depends on whether plant utilizes carbon dioxide because you know plant needs to carry out other uh, physiological activities as well, biochemical activities inside the cell as well. For that they need oxygen. But for other purpose of converting the carbon dioxide into food, they need the supply of CO2. And CO2 is also obtained by the open stomata. Okay. Now, the rate of this photosynthesis depends on so many things. The idea of the photosynthesis, as you think. Now, if there is some physiological issue with opening and closing of the stomata by the plants, which may occur due to the stress to the plant, that can uh, lead to the decreased level of photosynthesis. Similarly, if the environment is very hot, the climate is very hot, there is very less water available, that can also be a problem uh, to start the process of photosynthesis, right? So if you think of all these different ideas, you'll get to know the different parameters that are controlling the plant 
to initiate photosynthesis. But photosynthesis is not only the job of the plant, but other organisms can do that. Bacteria can also uh, have and carry some of this antenna pigment. So if they carry some antenna pigment, they will be eligible uh, for converting carbon dioxide into simple sugar. We call them bacterial photosynthesis in that case. But whenever we refer the term photosynthesis in the large scale, we are referring to the photosynthesis in higher plants. Okay. So that is an overview of the photosynthesis. Now in the series of videos, we will talk about uh, the light reactions of the photosynthesis in details. We will talk about the dark reactions or Kelvin cycle of the photosynthesis in detail and along with this situation if you think about it that the process of dark reaction starts or initiates with an enzyme known as Rubisco and the idea is the Rubisco enzyme is the most predominant form of the enzyme most abundant protein available in the plant because it's present in every single plant that we know so the job of Rubisco is to initiate the first important step of fixation of the carbon dioxide Carbon dioxide fixation means we have this 5 carbon compound, ribulose 5 phosphate, and we attach a carbon dioxide to it to convert it into a 6 carbon component. And then 6 carbon component splits into 2, 3 carbon components. So, this is a very, very important step, the first and most important step of the Kelvin cycle that is catalyzed by enzyme Rubisco. Ribulose, bisphosphate, carboxylase. Uh, oxygenase oxygenase carboxylase so that is the enzyme rubisco because as you say the ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase oxygenase that means that enzyme carries two separate functionality carboxylase functionality and oxygenase functionality so carboxylase func functionality is when fixing carbon dioxide and converting five carbon component to the six carbon component which is quite natural in the kelvin cycle which ultimately give us the sugar. But the other functionality that is oxygenase activity of the Rubisco. So Rubisco can also fix oxygen instead of carbon dioxide. I just told you earlier that whenever stomata opens, the plant have access to oxygen and carbon dioxide both because in the atmosphere we have oxygen and carbon dioxide both, right? So what happens there at this point, it will get both oxygen and carbon dioxide. Rubisco is not specific towards carbon dioxide or oxygen and even Rubisco can bind with oxygen in even more affinity. So what will happen when Rubisco binds to the oxygen? It will fix oxygen instead of carbon dioxide and it will make completely different type of product that will ultimately can be converted to the sugar but it needs to carry out further few extra steps which are energy consuming. So if Rubisco fixes oxygen instead of carbon dioxide, that will be a big problem because a completely different types of product will be produced and it will be loss of energy. So there are few situations this thing happens when the environment is filled with carbon dioxide, low amount of oxygen is available, high temperature is there. For those plants to survive, they need to utilize different pathways. The pathway that we utilize here and see here is known as the C3 pathway because the first stable intermediate of this process is a 3 carbon component. But in those cases, the first stable intermediate will be 4 carbon component. So you call those pathways as C4 pathway. Okay. So we will also talk about C4 pathways and we will also talk about another unique pathway known as CAM pathway. Crassulation acid metabolism pathways. So stay tuned and watch the series of videos to get an idea about photosynthesis. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends, and subscribe to my channel to get all this video of the series. Thank you.